My name is Marcus Furler and I am the director of the Biomolecular NMR facility here at Vanderbilt University. As the name says, the Biomolecular NMR facility deals primarily with biomolecules and we approach these biomolecules by doing some NMR measurements. In order to do this, we have to get all these molecules purified first so that we can then measure them. Now, we are looking primarily at proteins, at DNA and RNA molecules. All of these molecules are intrinsically involved in our body's function and if any of these molecules is no longer in the proper state, we are dealing with diseases. And that's really what we are interested in figuring out. How do diseases evolve, what's involved, which protein is changed or what kind of interaction is taking place when the body doesn't do what it's supposed to do. Now, if you think about an NMR, biomolecular NMR facility, quite often you think about protein structures. We can do much more in this facility as this poster here shows. We don't only do structures of proteins, although that is a very important and uh, fundamental part of uh, the work we do because when we have the structure we can explain a lot of the interactions. But we also look at how small molecules or other proteins or DNA interact with proteins. So we can do binding studies here and we do that actually quite a lot. We also can see how a molecule, a protein, behaves in solution. Whether it's flexible, whether it has some flexible parts inside the molecule or whether it's more rigid. And that tells us a lot in terms of what can happen in a molecule. Now the beauty of NMR in general is that we can study these proteins or all these biomolecules in their uh, living environment how it is, how they are existing in our body compared to other methods where you have to crystallize the proteins and stuff like this. So we really find out exactly the native environment and how the protein behaves right in there. We can see whether a protein is folding properly and that gives us also a lot of uh, information in terms of what's going on with that particular protein. A main experiment that we always go back to is the HSQC, the Heteronuclear Single Quantum Coherent Experiment. It is a very important experiment because what we can tell with this experiment is basically each position of the amino acid. Each of these peaks here reflects one NH group of an amino acid and therefore we have a very specific sensor for each amino acid that we can monitor. It is very powerful to know exactly where changes take place because we know exactly which amino acid is represented if one of these peaks would change. What's sometimes a little bit more troubling by doing uh, NMR studies on biomolecule is that we have to label our proteins in order to get a uh, good spectrum. Labeling means we have to grow the protein in isotopically enriched medium. This can be N15, carbon-13, deuterium or all three of them. Now because in the na nature these isotopes have a very very low abundance we need to get them up to hundred percent in order to get all our NMR signals. That means the sample preparation is often very involving and in times can be very costly. But once we have a sample we can go and really assign the backbone and the structure which then serves as in many many studies to find out what all is going on. So how do we do this? Let's go down to the lab and see what kind of instrumentation we are using to get this kind of information. We're down here now in the magnet lab where we have our 900 megahertz uh, magnet. 
This is one of the world's biggest NMR magnets as it is commercially available and we are very proud of this uh, instrument. As you can imagine these proteins can be very large so in order to get all these signals resolved we're going to higher and higher magnets and that is really powerful to get the best possible resolution on these spectra. This magnet here as well as the 800 that we have here are also unique in that they need to be cooled down much further than all the normal magnets. Just liquid helium as it boils at about minus 440 Fahrenheit is not sufficient anymore. We need to supercool the helium in these magnets which means we continuously need to pump on that helium to get the additional coldness. Now this pumping actually then requires that we need to have the pumps running at all times. There is quite some uh, security measures that we needed to take in order to make sure that we have always electricity. So for this magnet here we have the pumps that are on an uninterruptible power supply, uh, basically a battery pack and in addition to that they are on a gas generator so that when the power goes out we still can pump on these magnets. If the pumping would fail for a few hours the magnet basically would get warm enough and destroy it. So we really want to make sure that is not going to happen. Besides the magnet there are several other very important components in order to get an NMR spectrum. One of them is the whole electronics. We have a whole rack filled with components that produce our RF frequencies in order to excite our spins and then measure the spectrum for the NMR measurement. Another very critical component is our sensor. These days most of the sophisticated NMR spectrometers actually run with a cooled sensor, a cold a probe or a cryoprobe. In order to cool down the cryoprobe and minimize the thermal noise in the electronics we need a whole apparatus to cool it down to about 20 kelvins. We have here a cryo platform and then connections that go over to the sensor in order to supply the cold helium and also the vacuum that is needed so that not the whole apparatus freezes over and we still can measure our samples in the center of that sensor at room temperature. The second line here that you see actually leads to the top of the magnet. It goes right on to the nitrogen port there. Nitrogen is being used in these magnets to pre-cool the helium because nitrogen is way cheaper than the helium and what we can do is we ordinarily refill the magnet on a weekly basis with nitrogen. Now since we have this cooling mechanism the nitrogen as it evaporates condenses and drips right back into the magnet. So we contain the nitrogen in these magnets which has a huge advantage in that we do not need to refill we do not need to disturb the operation on a weekly basis and can long, run much longer measurements. Also the measurements are much more stable because we have always the same nitrogen level in the magnet. Right next up here this big box is a sample jet. What we can do with this sample jet is we can actually run up to 600 samples one after the other. We use that quite often if we are testing small molecules with a protein and see how they interact with each other. The small molecule hopefully eventually leading to a drug molecule that interacts and has a very specific function to a protein. In order to do that we have these 96 sample cartridges. We have here 96 of these 5 mm NMR tubes where the protein solution will be in there. This sample then goes right into the center of the magnet where it's being measured. And so we can actually go ahead and measure one after the other in order to do our screens. This is an NMR tube how we 
prepare our samples that then go into the magnet. Right here you see our biomolecule that's in solution. It is in a 5 mm very high precision glass tube that we then insert into a spinner at a certain height and this whole assembly then goes into the top of the magnet. Besides the 5 mm tubes we have all kinds of other variations. We can have smaller diameters from 4 to 3 mm tubes and they are often used if we have higher salt concentration. It makes the measurements much more amenable if we use these smaller tubes. Also we have the shorter tubes that we can actually do put into the sample jet and here we have a variety of uh, diameters again 1.7, 1 mm, 3 mm and the 5 mm tubes. If you can concentrate up your solution you can actually get much better results as you go to these smaller diameters and have down to 45 microliters of solution that you need to use in order to get an NMR spectrum. In addition to the 900 and the 500 megahertz spectrometer that we have just seen on the other side of the room, we also have a nice, uh, two nice 600s, one with a sample changer where we also can do all these screenings and another one that has, uh, in addition to the proton, nitrogen, carbon, also a phosphorus channel, which is often helpful for RNA and DNA work. If you're interested in using this facility and have some uh, need to run NMR on your biomolecule, we would be more than happy to uh, talk to you on our web page, which is uh, listed here in the bottom of the screen. You find more information and you also find the con contact information how you can reach us. There's also a lot more information about the facility, what we can do, what we have. So please feel free to take a look at uh, all these pages and find out. We'd love to get in touch with you. Thanks.